Hello, and welcome to Eyes Academy, the series where I want to teach you about some of the more complex and often misunderstood mechanics in The Binding of Isaac. Today's episode is part two of our discussion on special rooms. Part one covered the secret rooms, the sacrifice room, the library, and the I Am Error room. Check out part one for more info on those rooms. Today's episode will be covering the challenge rooms, the curse room, the arcade, and gambling mechanics. The challenge room is a special room that allows you the opportunity to pick up a chest or an item in exchange for fighting a gauntlet of enemies. In order for a challenge room to spawn, the player must have full health, or the equivalent after adding soul hearts, upon level generation. This means that with three heart containers, a challenge room should spawn if at the beginning of the level the player has three red hearts, or two red hearts and a soul heart. The player must also have full hearts in order to enter the challenge room. Once an item is picked up in the room, the gauntlet will begin. This is important to consider, as any item, not just the one that appeared upon entering the room, will trigger the gauntlet. The gauntlet will last for three rounds, and its difficulty scales with the game, such that deeper floors contain more difficult enemies. Occasionally, a pickup item will spawn upon completing the gauntlet. The boss challenge room is a special version of the challenge room that can only be entered if the player has a single red heart or less. This does not include soul hearts, so one can have as many soul hearts as possible and still enter the boss challenge room, as long as they have only one red heart or less. Blue Baby can always enter a boss challenge room. The boss challenge room will contain an item that is usually dropped by a boss. Upon picking up the item, the player will begin the gauntlet in which they will have to fight two waves of boss monsters. Again, the difficulty of these challenge rooms scales with the levels of the game. Note that picking up any upgrade will start the fight, so if the player has spawned an item via the beggar or a slot machine, the gauntlet will begin. A few notes for challenge and boss challenge rooms. The player cannot bomb their way out of challenge rooms. They can teleport out, or if they have x-ray vision and happen to be adjacent to a secret room, they can exit freely. Also, if the player pauses the game or uses a spacebar item immediately after starting the gauntlet, they may spawn multiple waves of enemies at once, or in the case of the boss challenge room, both bosses will spawn. Note that picking up any item pedestal item will start the fight. So if the player has spawned an item pedestal via the beggar or slot machine, the gauntlet will begin. The curse room is a special room that provides the player with one or two red chests, or even an item, at the cost of damage. Upon entering the room, the player is dealt damage, and then again upon exiting. If the player can fly, or if there is a spider web in front of the door, they will take no damage upon entering the room. The player will, however, take damage when exiting. Additionally, items like Book of Shadows that confer invincibility will allow the player to avoid taking damage. Items like the IV bag can be used just before entering or exiting the room in order to control the type of damage you take. This can be useful if you want to preserve soul hearts and would prefer to take the red heart damage that the IV bag would do instead. The red chest in the curse room can contain any of the following. Two spiders, one or two soul hearts, one golden chest, two troll bombs, one super troll bomb, two to three pills, three to six blue flies, a devil or angel room item, or one of the four guppy items. Finally, using a judgment card in the curse room and giving them enough money to spawn an item confers a high likelihood of spawning a devil or angel room item. Whether an item is from the Devil or Angel pool depends on which of those types is present on the floor. So if you get an Angel Room item in the Curse Room, you know an Angel Room is present on the floor, though getting there is a complex process on its own. Sometimes, instead of conferring an item or pickup to the player, the chests will teleport the player to either the Devil or Angel Room, whichever happens to have spawned on the current floor. Because of this, it is important to try and pick up most items and use them before opening the second chest for fear of having to re-enter and take damage. Note, 
Random pills in chests could be telepills, which have the chance of sending you to the I am error room with no way back. Keep this in mind when considering which order you take the pills that may spawn in this room. The arcade is a special room that allows the player to gamble at various stations in order to gain money, pickups, or powerful items. An arcade can only spawn on even-numbered or XL floors, and the player must have at least five coins at the start of the level. Entry into the arcade costs one penny instead of a key. Upon entering the arcade, the player will see three stations with which to gamble. A shell game, a blood bank, and either a fortune teller or slot machine. Additionally, there will often be a heart, a coin, some poop, or a tinted rock in the room. Now, we will discuss gambling mechanics further. For all gambling mechanics, it should be noted that the luck stat does not provide any bonus. It applies to chances of random tiers and pickup spawns at the end of a room. The lucky foot, however, does provide bonus chances to most gambling options. The shell game will always spawn in the arcade. The beggar is made to represent a shell game in which after paying one coin, the player is shown an item underneath one of three skulls. The item can be either a heart, a key, a bomb, a coin, or scatol. Scatol has a 1 in 13 chance of appearing as the item underneath the skulls, while the rest of the items each have a 3 in 13 chance of appearing. In a real shell game, the player is expected to follow the movement of the item in an attempt to guess which skull it rests under. In The Binding of Isaac, however, the item is not linked to any specific skull, and the player merely has a 33% base chance of getting the item shown upon touching the beggar for a second time. With the luck foot, if the player fails, the game actually re-rolls the chance again, giving the player another chance of success. This essentially amounts to a 55% chance of success as opposed to the base 33% chance. Upon success, the player will generally receive two or three of whichever item was shown, except for scat hole, in which case the player only receives one copy of the item. Additionally, whichever item drops has normal chances to appear as an alternate version of itself. This means that hearts can be either half or full red hearts, or soul hearts, with a small chance of being an eternal heart. Coins can be pennies, nickels, or dimes. Bombs can be a single bomb, a 1 plus 1 free bomb, or a troll bomb, with a rare chance of being a super troll bomb. And keys can also, on rare occasion, spawn as a golden key. The player may play the shell game as many times as they want, or until Scatol appears. Upon winning Scatol, the shell game beggar will disappear, and an item pedestal with Scatol will appear. Scatol is a passive item that makes flies less dangerous to the player. Normal flies will no longer do damage to the player, while boom flies will be slowed down, and motors will no longer split into two flies upon death. If the player fails to win a shell game, an attack fly will appear and attempt to attack the player, so a common strategy is to continuously fire in the direction of the shell game when waiting for a success roll. Blowing up the shell game beggar with a bomb will drop several pickups, as well as increase your chances of finding a deal with the devil on the current floor. Slot machines are similar to the shell game offering the player a way of potentially turning extra money into items. For one coin, the player gets one turn at the slots. Upon success, the player will generally get one of whichever item drops, while occasionally getting two of the regular pickups of hearts, keys, coins, and bombs. Additionally, the slot machine can drop a pretty fly, which will provide you with a free orbital fly, a random pill, a tarot card, or the dollar, which is worth 99 cents. Upon getting the dollar, the slot machine will explode and leave an item pedestal with the dollar on it, stopping the player from being able to use the slot machine any longer. The slot machine also has several failure states, such as spawning an attack fly that will attempt to damage you, a failure which merely gives the player nothing for that coin, or exploding, in which case it will drop several random pickup items. As with the shell game, 
all drops from the slot machine that are regular pickups have a chance of spawning as their rarer versions. The lucky foot greatly reduces the chance of failing or exploding at the slot machine. The fortune teller is a special version of the slot machine. For one coin, the player has a chance of it dropping a random trinket, a soul heart, or a random tarot card. Additionally, there is a chance of the fortune teller dropping the crystal ball. A spacebar item that will reveal the current map, as long as it isn't a curse of darkness, and drop either a random tarot card or a soul heart. The fail state takes the form of random fortunes that are references to Binding of Isaac or other games, as well as other jokes that generally don't serve much purpose. However, one fortune does direct the player to bring him the photo, which is a reference to the Polaroid trinket, which is necessary to bring to the final boss of the cathedral in order to unlock the final level of the chest. Additionally, the fortune teller can fail by exploding and providing the player with a few random pickups. If you have the lucky foot, the fortune teller will no longer provide fortunes, but will instead always pay out or explode. The Wheel of Fortune card spawns either a slot machine or a fortune teller. This is also dependent upon the room that you are in, such that the super secret room that contains a fortune teller will always make the Wheel of Fortune card spawn a fortune teller. The Portable Slot is a spacebar item that allows the player to make slot machine rolls as long as they have money. There are a few notes to this item. First, there is no chance that the Portable Slot will drop a dollar bill. The portable slot will not work, merely wasting the coin, if you use it while exiting a room. One trick with the portable slot is to use it to purposefully spawn a black fly in a boss room after clearing the boss, which will reset the boss, allowing the player to farm boss items. A final note on slot machines and the portable slot is that their heart drops are room dependent. This was discussed in part one of this video during the discussion of super secret rooms. The blood donation machine, or blood bank, will deal damage to the player while providing between one and three coins. This number of coins increases by one with the PhD. As with all gambling, these coins have a chance to spawn as pennies, nickels, or dimes. Blowing up the blood bank provides the player with several red hearts and or coins. There is also a 1 in 15 chance of the blood bank exploding and giving the player either the blood bag or the IV bag. The blood bag provides the player with an additional heart container, a speed upgrade, and refills 5 hearts. Additionally, the blood bag can be obtained multiple times in a single run, providing the player with a number of opportunities to increase their health outside of boss fights. The IV bag provides the player with a spacebar item that allows them to essentially trade damage for coins on the go. The blood bank will not pay out with the IV bag if the player has previously picked it up in the current run. There are several important notes about the blood bank. Firstly, the blood bank will take eternal hearts first, followed by red hearts, and then when the player has only a half of a red heart left, it will start to take soul hearts. The player can, in fact, be killed by the blood donation machine. On earlier floors, the blood bank will take a half of a red heart at a time. Past the mom's foot fight, the blood bank will start to take a full red heart. The most straightforward way to play the blood bank is to use the other gambling machines within the room to try and spawn additional hearts. While in a period of invincibility, the player can use the blood bank without wasting any hearts as well. This can allow the player many opportunities to gain coins and potentially get a blood bag or the IV bag. The habit will allow you to charge spacebar items quickly, and combined with the Yum Heart, Book of Revelations, or other such items, allows the player to regenerate hearts quickly, giving them more opportunities to use the blood bag. Additionally, the Bloody Penny, a trinket which provides a chance of dropping a red heart upon picking up coins, is also a viable way of getting more plays off of a blood bag. Finally, a Temperance card will spawn a blood bank in whatever room you are in. The final part of our discussion on gambling will cover beggars. Giving the beggar money will give a chance of random pickup spawning, including hearts, keys, bombs, or an item pedestal. Much like other gambling mechanics, when the beggar drops an item pedestal, it will disappear. 
on the item pedestal, the beggar will generally drop health items, such as breakfast, shop items, or treasure room items. The beggar can also draw from the item pool of the room he is in. This means that you can use the judgment card to spawn a beggar in a devil room for chances of spawning free devil room items. Generally, beggars are considered an extremely valuable resource to use as long as you have a fair amount of coins, somewhere around seven or more. The Devil Beggar is a version of the beggar that trades for damage rather than coins. He follows the same rules as the Blood Bank, where he takes half of a red heart on earlier floors and a full red heart after the mom's foot fight. Similarly, they will take Eternal Hearts first, followed by Red Hearts, and then Soul Hearts once the player has reached minimum red hearts. Additionally, periods of invincibility can be exploited to get free plays on the Devil Beggar. The Devil Beggar can pay out with trinkets, pills, tarot cards, or an item pedestal. Upon paying out with an item pedestal, Devil Beggars can draw from the Devil and Angel Room item pools, as well as the Shop, Health, or Treasure Room item pools. As per usual, they will disappear after an item pedestal payout. The Devil Beggar has a roughly 1 in 4 chance of paying out on each use, but this increases to about 1 in 3 with the Luck Foot. If blown up, either beggar will drop a few random pickups, with the Devil Beggar potentially spawning spiders. This will also increase Devil Room spawn chance by 35% for the current floor. A final note on the arcade is that it can be a great room for using rerolls with the D6. With a little luck, you can get the Slot Machine, Blood Bank, and Shell Game Beggar all to pay out with their respective item pedestals. Additionally, you can use a Judgment card to spawn another item, giving you four item pedestals to re-roll with a single roll. Combined with an item such as the Nun's Habit or Nine Volt, this can be a truly game-making room. Thanks for watching this episode of Eyes Academy. I hope you now have a better understanding of special rooms. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as suggestions for future Eyes Academy videos. And don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel to be sure to see all future Eyes Academy videos.